And so the Bible says this whole depression, this whole situation, David's life is going to be rectified by this. Verse 11, they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat. And they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. It's healing to you. It's healing to me. To minister to somebody else's need. I promise you there's always somebody that's going through a lot more than you are. And have experienced a lot more loss than you have. And find that person and give what you can to them. Give them a little bread. Give them a little water. Give them a little a cake of raisins. Give them a little figs. Praise the Lord God. And as you minister to that person, God is going to use that to restore and recover to you what was lost. See, David is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He won't leave you in a field destitute to die. He will come to you and help you and give you something to eat and give you something to drink. And that's the way we should be. Start a ministry. Win the lost. So David looks at this Egyptian. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me because three days agone I fell sick. That's exactly what the devil's going to do to you. You follow him, he'll leave you for dead in the field. But the Bible says this. We made an invasion upon the south of the, the Carathites and upon the coast which belonged to Judah and upon the south of Caleb. And we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God. That thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee down to this company. When he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all. That the Amalekites had carried away and David rescued his two wives. Launch yourself in winning the lost. Find somebody that's bound by demonic powers and demonic forces. Give yourself to soul winning and watch what God's going to do in your life. And that's what people in the world do. They even they know that. If you experience something, something, some great loss... You start a foundation. You start a ministry. You start a law enforcement movement. And that's what God is trying to show us in the Bible here today. If you're depressed today, minister to somebody else. Hallelujah. And you'll get your joy back. When you see a soul go down in Jesus' name and get filled with the Holy Ghost, your depression will leave. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. I know people in this church. I mean, they're having a hard time. They're having a hard time feeding a mouse in their house. But they have launched themselves. One individual, I'm thinking, that launched themselves into serving God, day and night. Say praise the Lord God. Holly, that's what you do. You don't quit. You don't become immobile. You don't become paralyzed. Hallelujah. You get up and you move in the name of the Lord. I'm encouraged by God. I'm going to fight this fight. I'm going to believe. I'm going to recover. And on the way, God's going to find somebody for me to minister to. And when I do, who knows? God may use them to recover. See, y'all can sit down. I want to talk to some of you singles. You look around and you're so depressed because you don't see anybody in the church that you can get married to. And you just wonder, well, I wonder, 
I just don't see anybody. Why don't you win somebody to God? Why don't you win your husband to God? Why don't you win your wife to God? Ever thought about that? Dang. Well, I just don't know who I'm going to marry. Well, I tell you what, brothers and sisters, get out there and win a soul. Hallelujah. And that might be the one you're going to be married to. Say, praise the Lord. Oh, or you want to keep sucking your thumb. Feel sorry for yourself because you don't see anybody. Well, that's your own fault. Hallelujah. We say, you know what? Don't just win one. Win about ten. You're a young woman in here today. You say, well, I'm not going to focus on winning one. I'm going to win ten. That way I get my pick. <laughs> Hallelujah. If somebody comes around and says, oh, no, you stay away. I want all ten of these to God. And when I, get, when I pick mine, then you can come around and look at the other nine. But I did my job. But you stay away. You stay away. Hallelujah. Win about 10, if you're a young man, win about 10 young ladies. That way you get your pick. Hallelujah. There's a solution to every problem. Now, you don't go in the outside and get into a relationship with somebody in the world. That's not a good thing. You win into God. And you, you, you watch them. You make sure they're on fire for God. That they're in the church for the right reason. Hallelujah. And when they get more on fire than you are, then you say, you might work. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But if you're a young woman in the church right now, you don't want to be more spiritually on fire than the one you're going to marry. So you sit back and you watch them for a little while. You see how they act under pressure. You see how they act when they get in times of loss. See how they act when difficulties come in their life. Because the way they act in is the way they're going to act in the future. Are they going to keep praying and worshiping? Are they going to keep going to church? Are they going to keep serving God when things are not going good? If they do, that might be a possibility. Look at your neighbor and say, praise the Lord. There's a solution to every problem. You get God's principles. If you minister to people, you'll be ministered to. The Bible says, listen, what, this is what the Bible says. Solomon said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In all of his years and all of his experiences, he said, I can tell you one thing. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. How many of believe that? Why? Because the Bible tells you something else. Cast your bread upon the water, and after many days, it will return to you. That means get busy ministering to somebody else, and that will come back to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to start a ministry? And you want your ministry to be successful? How many of y'all, if, you, if you're called to the ministry, how many of y'all called to the ministry? See, I haven't done a very good job because every one of you are called into the ministry. Maybe not pulpit, but every one of you are called into the work of the ministry. How many of you would like to have your ministry succeed? Okay, yeah. Praise the Lord. You say, what kind of ministry do you have? There's a, you, you got capabilities and understanding and knowledge and experiences in life that other people don't have and you can help them where I you can help them in some ways I can't even help them amen because you know the lingo see when I talk I talk a certain way hallelujah and I don't know the lingo but you do and you can walk up there and you can talk the lingo to somebody. And they click. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He used to be like me. Say praise the Lord. 
If you want to be successful in the ministry, if you want to be successful in life, the key is to help somebody else be successful. If you want to get up, then you need to help somebody else get up. Somebody said, praise the Lord. David understood this principle. Hallelujah. Because he took down a giant that was against the nation of Israel. When he defeated that giant, he was helping Saul. A lot of people, see, a lot of people, they want their ministries to grow. And they want people to help them to grow those ministries. If you don't help them grow their ministry, they're not obligated to help you grow theirs. You got to learn this principle and you got to get it down. If you want to be successful, you got to help somebody else be successful. In Jesus' mighty name. Am I coming too strong at you? It's the truth. It's a principle that's in the Word of God. So we got this person down and out, starving to death, mistreated by the master, forsaken and abandoned to die. And David said, you know what? I'm going to help them. I'm going to feed them. I'm going to minister to them. And God used that very man to recover everything. In the name of Jesus. There's answers in the Bible. But do we want to obey them? Do we want to follow the pattern? So if you're depressed, I want you to lift your hand if you're depressed. Okay? Nobody's depressed. Praise the Lord. And I don't even know why I'm preaching this message. Nobody's depressed? Okay, well, good. I'm glad you're not. I'm not trying to make you depressed by preaching on depression. I'm going to show you the way out of your distress, of your times of sorrow, of your time of hurt, of your time of pain, your time of suffering. God has the answer. Lift up your heads. Lift up your hands. Focus on God. Encourage yourself in God and get busy ministering to somebody else. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's a principle in the Word of God. And so the Bible tells us this man told David exactly where the enemy was. He went in and he recovered everything. Now there were 200 men of the 600 that couldn't go with David. They were so tired and so fatigued. The 200 men said, we can't go any further, David. And so only 400 of the 600 went with David into the battle to recover the spoil. And 200 stayed behind. You read the story. I don't have time to read every verse. It's in the Bible. Read it. If you don't believe me, it's there. There were 200. They were just so tired, so fatigued. We can't go any further. So 400 men went with David. They won the battle. They won the victory. After ministering to that man. Find a, find a soul that's lost. And minister to him. They came back. They recovered everything. And David said you know what. We're going to share the spoils for, with everybody. Not just with the people that went to fight. But with the 200 that were so tired they couldn't fight. And you know what the Bible said. David said he was up against he was up against the men of Belial. There were some men of the devil right in the congregation of God's people. And David was up against the men of Belial. They're called worthless men. Worthless men. It's amazing to me that in the congregation of God Almighty, there are, there are people that are the men of Belial. They are worthless men. And all they do is seek to hinder the blessings from flowing. And so the men of Belial look at David and they say, David, this is only for us. We're going to keep it for ourselves because we went to fight and we're not going to share it with these other 200 men. They're called the men of Belial. David said, I'm not listening to you. I'm not listening to you. 
I'm going to minister the spoils, not only to the ones that went into the battle to fight. I'm going to minister the spoils of those that were too tired to fight. I'm going to share it with everybody. You know why? Because David wanted to reward their past faithfulness to him. They were with him at some point in the past. And he did not forget that. And he he faced some flack, if you will. He faced some men of Belial. Some people that didn't want to do it in the church. But David understood the importance of sharing the spoils with everybody. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So he looked at those men of Belial and says, I don't care what you say. Paraphrase. I'm going to share it with everybody. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he sent this and he sent it over here and he sent it over there and he sent it over there. Well, he's showing the people of the church. He's showing the church. You know, remember he was over here with the enemy. He's showing them now. I'm not with the enemy. I'm with you. I'm with God. And I'm going to share the spoils. I'm going to prove that I'm with you. I'm going to prove whose side I'm on. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm on the people of God's side. I'm going to share it. Share the victory. And not seek to hinder the blessings of God among the people of God. And we know the end of the story. That it wasn't too much longer after this. That King Saul is slain. And removed by God. And David after that long time of battle and loss. And people rejecting him and not standing with him. And learning the principles of warfare in Ziklag that he needed to learn. Right after that he gets appointed to be the king of Judah. And then later the king of all Israel. You have to be willing to go through some things, suffer some things before you can reign. Because you won't know what to do with the reigning if you haven't been through process to teach you how to use it when you get it. Say praise the Lord God. So hallelujah for all those tonight that want to be ministered to. You will be. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is for you. And God, there's not a temptation that's come upon you that God will not with that temptation make a way of escape. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God. Let's stand. I'm trusting you, God, tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, bless this church. Bless this people. God, you know the tears that have been cried. The pain tears cried there's no more tears to cry hurting so bad mighty God we believe you we take you at your word today we encourage ourselves in you God tonight we turn to you Lord we turn to your word we look to you for direction use us God to minister to people to help people We trust, God, that you will recover everything that has been lost. Recover children. Recover family members. In Jesus' name, recover. You know the need today, God. I believe you. I take you at your word today. I'm encouraged tonight. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm encouraged tonight. Amen. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse it. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse it. Not with the God I serve. The God that can turn it all around. Just like that. I refuse that. I'm not going to let the enemy put that on me. In Jesus name. So I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God knows if your battle has been long and hard. He knows. Some people sick so long. Depressed, financial problems. Again, some of it brought on by our own decisions. But God still loves you. And God still cares about you. And there's a way out. But at some point, brothers and sisters, we have to stop just hearing the word of God. We have to start doing it. My mother-in-law, she's in her 80s. 
My father-in-law is fixing to have a birthday February the 1st. He's in his 80s. My mother-in-law looked at my wife the other day. And she could tell my wife was going through some things. And she said, you know, she said people today, they want to hear preachers tell them. But they don't want to do what the preacher tells them to do. The answer is in the Bible. And I can preach it to you. But you have to put it to work. And if you work this, brothers and sisters, if you work this word, it works. I tell you, it works. God is faithful in the name of Jesus. I don't want to just get up and speak to you. And you go out. I want you to understand if you'll do it. Do what David did. And watch God recover, restore in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We thank you for all that you have done. We love you. We trust you. We trust you. We take you at your word. We believe, Lord. In Jesus' name. Minister to your people. Encourage your people. Encourage the church. Encourage family members. Encourage brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. I'm just going to tell you how good God is. Tell you how good God is. Is That there's people in this church, they fight every day. They pray every day. They serve with all their heart every day. They don't miss prayer before church. They're in the prayer rooms praying. And there's a few of you, you never even bother to pray. You never come to the ladies' prayer meetings. You never, you never do anything for God. But I want to tell you something, the kind of God He is. He's going to bless you as well. He won't leave you out. If you're a part of this church... Even if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. God says, I'm still going to bless them. Because that's the kind of God He is. <laughs> Hallelujah. So may the Lord bless you real good. Is my prayer. And if you're hurting tonight, God knows it. Amen. It's alright. It's alright if you're hurt. I would like for you to do, to do this. I would like for you to pray for somebody. You can minister tonight. Without doing anything but praying. And that's uh, brother and sister Dixon. And their family. 15 years ago. They got a word from God. 15 years ago. That they would start a church. And they would pastor a church. And so sister Dixon called. Talked to my wife last night. And after 15 years. Of going through it. I mean going through it. I don't know everything, but I know many things that they have gone through. God found them, counted them worthy. And so now they're fixing to start a church in Cleveland, Texas. I believe it's Cleveland. And so what you can do, brothers and sisters, right now, is you can undergird them. You can pray for them that God would help them as they're starting this new ministry. Hallelujah. This new church in Cleveland, Texas. And... She was talking to my wife last night and, you know, she said, she said, she told my wife, she said, y'all been through some things and we have, but God is good. I'm telling you, God is good and he's faithful. Amen. And so now they're going to start this church and we're going to pray for them. That's what you can do. You can minister to them. You can send your prayers all the way to Cleveland, Texas. And pray that God would prosper that ministry. And that ministry would grow. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And when they got at the end of the conversation. Tears started coming in my eyes. Not tears of joy. But tears of concern. Because I know. Whenever somebody steps up and says. I'll do a ministry. I'll pastor a church. They're getting ready to go through it. But you know what? We can pray for them, brothers and sisters. We can get behind them. We can hold up their hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God. Amen. And I believe in that, brother and sister Dixon. But I told my wife last night. Brothers and sisters, 
I hate to tell you this, but there's a lot of people in Pentecost that are like Saul. And when you look at them, you get discouraged. And when you look at them, you might say, if this was what Christianity is all about, I don't want to have anything to do with it. But by the grace of God, we don't give in to that spirit. But I told my wife, I said about Brother Sister Dixon, I said, they're real people. And I, I, I thank God for real people. Real people. Hallelujah. And number two, they're people of faith. People of faith. So please pray for them. Minister to them by way of prayer. And I, I know that's going to help them, encourage them, and undergird them. And, and so I think next week he's coming back from Florida. He drove all the way to Florida from Cleveland, Texas. Went all the way to Florida to buy some chairs so they could start, uh, you know, bringing some chairs into a place of meeting there. And uh, so he's going to be coming back next, next uh, week. With those chairs. And they've got faith. And they're trusting God. For a church. Would you pray for them? You can do that brother and sister. You can pray for them. Hallelujah. They give you. They give you. From sister Carrie Dixon's mouth. They give you their love. They love you. They love this church. Praise God. So thank God for real people. I thank God for real people. I, forgive me, but I have, I'm so tired of phonies. I thank God for real people. And they're real people in Jesus' name. And you're real people. I'm looking at real people tonight. And I believe you're going to pray for them. How are y'all going to pray for Brother and Sister Dixon? Okay, well, I, when I talk to them, I'm going to tell them. The church goes, I got about, you know, I got the churches with you. They're going to be praying for you. They don't, they don't pray for me, but they're going to pray for you. <laughs> they don't care anything about me, but they love you. Hallelujah. That's... I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking, get over it. <laughs> I'd have never made it this far if you didn't pray for me. I love all of you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. And as you go to look at, go to somebody and tell them how much you love them in Jesus' name. And you might ask them a question, are you a real person?